Whether this is your first time here or you've seen other videos that I've made, please take a minute and hit subscribe, hit that little bell notification thing so that you don't miss out on any of the upcoming videos. All right, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you do a subcuticular running suture um, and finish it with what's called an Aberdeen knot. Okay, so let me, let me go ahead and start. Now, a subcuticular suture, if we're going to be closing skin level with subcuticular suturing, the wound should already be pretty well approximated. It shouldn't be big and gaping like this, okay? If the wound is gaping, it wouldn't be appropriate to use a subcuticular stitch because it's not a strong suture. You're, you're passing suture through soft uh, tissue that's easy to rip open, and so if there's a lot of gaping uh, pressure from the outside, then you want to uh, use a different suture technique. But if it's already pretty well approximated like this and the depths of this laceration are either not needing closure or have already been closed, then a subcuticular suture is a good method. Now the suture that you would use to do subcuticular would need to be something dissolvable. Okay, generally I use something like a 5 monocryl. Now 5 monocryl does not look like this. Okay, this is a 4 nylon. I'm simply using this 4 nylon for the video purposes so that you can see what I'm doing. If I were actually using a 5 monocryl, which looks a lot like small fishing line, you might not actually be able to see it very well in the video. So understand that 5 monocryl is a good, uh, a good uh, suture material for a subcuticular stitch. But to start this off, the way I like to do this is I like to start with a suture that's somewhere down in, in the depths. I'm going to uh, grab onto some rather tough tissue there in the depths of the wound, okay, where I can anchor in. Okay, I'm doing an anchor suture. So it's in the depths. I'm not too worried about uh, skin level at this point. I'm going to go ahead and do an instrument tie. You could do a hand tie if you felt like you uh, wanted to, but I'm going to go ahead and do a, a, an instrument tie here. Notice how I'm kind of pulling my uh, tails back and forth with the laceration rather than apart because I'm in the depths. So I'm pulling this way rather than this way. So I'm, I don't want to cause any skin edge damage that way. Now because this is a running suture technique, I need to keep obviously my uh, side with the needle attached uh, still intact and so I'm just going to cut one tail and I want to make sure that tail is not very long so that it's not sticking up through the skin as I move forward. So there we go. We've got suture anchored in the depths of this wound uh, near the apex and on the right side because I'm going to be going this direction as a running subcuticular continuous suture. So now the next step I would normally load my needle I'm kind of breaking one of my own rules here, but I'm touching the needle with my fingers. Um, but I would normally load the needle this way, but for this first step, I'm actually going to load it backhanded, okay? And you'll see why here in a second. The next step here is to start in the apex of this in the subcuticular area, which is very, very superficial. So I'm going to start kind of deep here and notice with the, the, the wound, I wanna come right into the apex just below that level. So really superficial, not above the skin, but now, even now I'm starting there at the apex of this incision, okay? So now I'm going to load my needle the, the front hand direction and the idea here with a subcuticular suture is that I'm basically drawing an S. Okay, I'm going back and forth through the patient's tissue in the same horizontal plane, very superficial, drawing this S-shaped pattern until I get to here, and that's where I'll finish in this video with what's called an Aberdeen knot. Okay, now because we're not going up and down like we do with other suture techniques, we're just going back and forth in the same horizontal plane, um, I tend to find it easier to have my needle loaded a little bit forward. Notice how I, I'm not at 90 degrees. If it was at 90 degrees, it would look more like this. Okay, but I want to load it a little bit more forward because that gives me a better angle as I'm trying to move in this direction. You'll see what I mean. So here we go. So next step here is I'm going to you're going to want to use your pickups quite a bit with this method because you want to lift up and see the depth of where you're at. And I want to enter the skin just below this skin level, okay, very superficial. And I'm passing through subcutaneous tissue and coming out again very superficial. And before you pull your needle through, make sure you didn't do what's called buttonhole it where you can see the needle here. Let me, let me show you what a mistake would be. So if I'm doing this method and I accidentally 
I'm, I'm entering the skin in this horizontal plane and I poke through a little bit without realizing it and then I come back this direction. Now notice if I pulled that through I've got that little dimple there. Let me zoom in. That's my needle which means as I pull the suture through the suture is going to be exposed in that spot. Okay so don't do that. So I'm going to pull this out and start over. So next first step here then after I've got the the suture there at the apex of the incision is to enter the skin in that horizontal plane very superficial being careful not to buttonhole and exiting again very superficial. I'm going to disconnect, come grab the needle and pull it through. Okay, so the next step then is I just need to go back the other direction. Now with subcuticular suturing you, kind of, you want to at least go straight across, perpendicular, straight across, or maybe back just a touch. Okay, if you go forward it's going to end up kind of crunching your, your, lacer your incision this direction. So I'm going to go back just a little bit because I, I made a rather large pass with that first pass through the skin in that horizontal plane. So I'm going to go back just a touch and enter the skin there. So let me show you. I'm going to pull back on the skin now and I want to be back a little bit behind where it was that I exited on the other side passing through the tissue and again making sure I don't buttonhole and pull that through. Okay, And so what we're doing here is creating this S-like pattern staying in the same exact depth the whole way so that as we <clears throat> go back and forth it uh, lays flat, the skin edges don't uh, come one over the top of the other one and we've got a nice uh, closure on the skin level. Okay, As you can see I went kind of straight across and making sure I'm at the same depth so now I'm getting the skin edges to just kiss there gently and making sure that we've got a uh, good closure. Okay coming back the other direction again making sure I'm coming straight across and at that same depth just superficial just below the surface of the skin Okay, notice I've got a little bit of a buttonhole, so I'm going to stop. I'm going to back out. There we go. Okay, again, back and forth. So it's a little bit of a time consuming suture, but now when would you want to do a subcuticular suture? That's a good question that's always asked is, well, when would I choose to do this? maybe more difficult, more technical subcuticular suture compared to just doing something like a simple interrupted or a vertical mattress? And that's a great question. The answer to that is you would want to do, you could consider rather, doing a subcuticular suture like this anytime there is a big cosmetic concern, okay? If there, the, there it's a laceration on someone's face or an incision on the face due to, you know, you know I've had a uh, situations in the past where we've done temporal artery biopsies for giant cell arteritis where we're, we're taking a piece of the, the artery from the lateral forehead and the temporal area and because that's you know very uh, you know it's out in the open it's on the patient's face then that becomes a cosmetic concern and so we would oftentimes close with subcuticular sutures. Um, other times, uh, surgeries on the neck, so like a carotid endarterectomy, where uh, the incision is, is an up and down vertical incision on the patient's neck, anterior neck, also a big cosmetic area, a place where no one wants to have a big nasty scar, um, and so we'll oftentimes close those anterior neck surgeries with a subcuticular suture or after like a thyroidectomy or an anterior cervical discectomy, those types of procedures. Okay. Um, additionally, if a patient has a, a, like a gastrointestinal surgery a, surgery, a GI surgery that's a laparoscopic procedure and they have the little portholes, the little trocar incisions that are very small on the abdomen, uh, very, very common to use an, a simple interrupted version of a subcuticular suture rather than a running, just doing one, maybe even two of the subcuticular sutures in an interrupted fashion is a common practice. And I, I uh, will be doing another video um, on that, an inter interrupted subcuticular, so that you can see what that would look like. All right, so we're getting close to the end here. 
All right, and see it's, it's lying pretty flat. Now to have it s seemingly buckle up in a couple of locations, you know, where it doesn't lie perfectly flat like the rest of the skin, that's okay, that's to be expected, especially if you're suturing subcuticular on uh, a place that is softer skin, like somebody's neck. Okay, especially the older somebody gets, the skin on the neck gets pretty thin. Now I'm going to pull this apart just so that you can see the, the pattern here. If you can look, hopefully you can see it. Maybe I'll zoom in just a touch here. Move this into the field of view a little better. You can see the suture goes back and forth in an S-shaped pattern, back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, and we tried to stay perpendicular there. So I'm going to give this a little tug, make sure we're nice and tight all the way across being careful because the tissue we're passing this needle through is not very strong. Again, you want to make sure that you're using this suturing technique only if the skin edges are already pretty well approximated. And generally to reinforce something like this, as I'll mention here at the end, we, we place steri strips over that to make sure that it holds strong while the skin heals. So here we're getting to the end. So I want to show you the Aberdeen knot. Okay. So I want to be a little closer to the apex with this. And so I'm going to do one more pass and I'm not going to pull it all the way through. So you'll see what I mean going to do my, my subcuticular suture here, making sure to stay in that same horizontal plane and really superficial. Okay, now here's the Aberdeen knot. Rather than pulling this all the way through, I'm going to use this loop. Okay, now with this loop, I want to make sure, first of all, that my loop isn't crossing. What I mean by that is this. If it was crossing, I can't open open up that incision. So I want to make sure that I'm I've got it opened up this way so that I've got the loop freely able to move. Okay, and I'm going to use a finger and a thumb. Ooh, if I can get it, there we go. Finger and a thumb, and then with this side that's got my needle still attached, being careful not to poke myself, I'm going to hold onto this tail. And this is the Aberdeen knot. Okay, loop open. I'm going to grab this and pull it through. Okay. Notice how I can cinch that down a little bit. First one is not as tight, but second time, I'm able to create that knot now using this Aberdeen knot, okay? Using this Aberdeen technique. So I'm pulling that, I'm holding it tight with my left finger, with my left hand here, holding tension, pulling and tightening that by kind of wiggling back and forth here with my, with my loop. And I'm going to do that a few times, at least four, maybe five times, okay? And that's tightening that knot down, okay? Now for the last move through this, I'm going to pull it through now. So did you see that? I pulled it through my loop, and I'm going to now pull the loop tight. Now don't pull too hard, because remember with a subcuticular suture, uh, you're passing the the suture through tissue that's not very strong anyway. So I'm going to use my other finger to kind of brace it as I pull that knot, wiggle it a little bit, get some tension there. Okay, so there we go. That was the Aberdeen knot. But now we've got a, we still have a little bit of an issue here because if I zoom in here, you can see right there, I've got the knot that is poking up through the skin and that's going to prevent this from healing well. I've got to bury that knot. So let me show you how you're going to bury that knot then. So I'm going to load up my suture with my needle driver. Okay. <clears throat> now with my left hand, I'm going to lift up on that so I can very clearly see where the knot is. Let me zoom in so you can see it well. Very clearly see where the knot is, and I'm going to go just above, meaning just to the right side of this knot, and I'm going to slide my needle down along the side of it so I know I'm under the needle, under the knot rather, and I'm going to turn my, my suture needle out here into the tissue somewhere. I need to grab it and push it a little bit more. There we go. Okay. Out here in the skin, open skin, and I'm going to pull that through. Now watch what the knot does. Okay. See the knot there? Keep an eye on the knot as I pull this through. It's going to flip that knot upside down. The knot disappeared. It is no longer anywhere to be seen. It is in the depths of this incision because I, we just flipped it upside down. We buried the knot. Okay. So now next step then is very simple. We're just going to lift up on this suture, give it a little bit of pressure. And without being careful not to cut the patient's skin, I'm going to cut that right there. I'm going to give it a little bit of a massage so that suture buries itself under the skin because it's a dissolvable suture. It's going to uh, dissolve over the next several weeks using the body's own inflammatory system. No need to uh, remove these sutures. Um, that being said, after placing a subcuticular running suture like this that is not very strong, I usually am going to place steri strips using some mastazole 
uh, glue out here on the sides and then steri strips across to give it a little bit more reinforcement so that it heals well and let those steri strips fall off on their own over the next seven to ten days and you are good to go. All right, well, I hope you found this helpful. I hope you uh, learned a great deal today with this. Uh, please let me know what you think down in the comments. Give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.